the little Bluetooth or whatever of the future that's capable of reading our brain waves, we can look at each other and communicate without ever saying a word. That's real technology that's unfolding right now, and it's so futuristic it's difficult for us to even accept that it could be happening. The next level of instant messaging. Yes, that's right. I just sent you a text. Did you receive it? You know. Ding, you have mail. <laughs> well, th this opens up another can of worms, if you will. Uh, the unleashing of the Pandora's box, the super soldiers of the future. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of reports in the last decade, especially in the post-9-11 world, about what these new super soldiers are going to look like. That's why we're seeing movies like Iron Man, Iron Maiden 2. I, I, I'm hearing that there's got potentially going to be a third. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are talking about future soldiers. Now, what are some of the characteristics or traits that we're reading about what, what they would like to develop in the future? I've heard different things ranging from special suits where they can jump over large walls hit through the walls and then there's the actual manipulation of, of course the human himself so he has superhuman like capabilities yeah well there again I mean you can read DARPA's own budget reports from the past uh, the, what has been funded certainly they've had an interest in literally rewriting or manipulating the DNA of uh, soldiers they've already developed go pills uh, which they can take in fact you know the Olympics ended just recently and there was you know discussions about several of, of the people in the Olympics that broke records and there was questions about whether they were using gene doping they're literally injecting genes into their system that gives them superior strength or stamina or whatever so there again if if we can do this in the public if you if you can go down to your local doctor and get injected with genetics that will somehow help you to perform and you can't pick it up in your system because it's a natural process that's a problem if you were being injected with some kind of steroids you know we can make you pee in a cup and we can pick that up and you can get in trouble gene doping is a different thing altogether well uh, the go pills that the military has developed for our soldiers are essentially that it'll help them stay awake for very long periods of time interestingly they also have an interest in diminishing the human trait towards harming another human individual to make them dull to the sense of killing so that they literally become killing machines who can fight tirelessly for days on end. We're talking about the manufacturing of the Urukai. That's what we're talking about, C uh, cr creating literal killing machines that have been altered genetically for total battlefield domination. Uh, but there's also going to be a non-military application of this technology either either by accident or by purpose and, and within transhumanism they intend it to be intentional of course the Birkbeck Law School uh, picking up on the House Foreign Affairs Committee meeting saying we've got to get ahead of this technology because these are going to be future threats on the street not just overseas on a battlefield these things are going to be here and they're going to be powerful and we have to learn how to deal with them uh, the Birkbeck Law School which teaches crime scene analysis crime scene investigators um, recently put out a press release in which they said they're going to have to develop uh, courses for crime scene investigator students in the future mm -hmm. to learn how to analyze a crime scene that has been perpetrated by a human non-human because um, let's say that you have a serial rapist but he's part wolf or he has some of the genetics of a wolf everything about him Everything about him might not fit our understanding of forensics. What a freaky possibility. Our understanding uh -oh. of profiling. Yeah. But, but it's serious enough that the government's actually funding they are. Uh, uh, committee hearings on this to prepare for the future. Wow. It just boggles the mind. And we see movies such as uh, Star Wars, Attack of the Clones which raises other questions since we've seen so many things implanted in movies that have later come out in reality come into manifestation could there be some sort of a secret army that they have been preparing for years grooming for years underground somewhere with technology that we know nothing about waiting for that day that they're summoned by the uh, the ISORON if you will could be I mean as as exotic as that sounds uh, we wrote a book, my wife and I wrote a book called The Aramon Gate, and we wanted the science to be believable. And uh, so we were able to get in contact with a person that works in molecular biology through a friend, a brother actually. I, and I can't tell you the corporation he works for, but this guy actually holds a patent on a Terminator seed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said to me, 
He said, look, what's happening in genetically modified crops, it's true, and it does pose a public health threat, but he said it is a drop in the bucket. If you were aware, this is what he said, whether he's right or wrong, I don't know, but it sounded believable, and he certainly was in a position to know. He said, uh, if you knew what's happening uh, in Latin America, where the United States has contracts with laboratories, where funding that is beyond congressional review, black budgets essentially, uh, is going uh, for super soldier technology, where these things have been being raised to full maturity. Mm -hmm. um, see, that was the debate recently out of the UK. These scientists were saying, we want to know now that we're able to create uh, human-animal chimeras, up fully up to 50% human-animal integration in the UK. Will the, would the public be willing now to let us have additional funds to take it to the next level, to start raising these to full maturity? And, and interestingly, part of their argument was, it's already being done anyway. Rogue scientists, Dr. Moreau wannabes, they're already doing this. They're already tapping into this technology. But there is a study right now, it's going on at McGill University. Uh, the professor that got it started, his name was Ivan Balaban. And what he did was a simple experiment, but it had profound implications for what we're talking about with transhumanism and genetically altered humans. He took uh, brain matter from developing quails, and he put it into the developing brains of chickens, mm -hmm. embryonic chickens, and then he grew the chickens, and the chickens exhibited head bobs and vocal trills of quail. And why that was important was he was able to show that complex behavior patterns can be transferred from one species to another species. And the implications behind that via transhumanism and altered humans means when we start blending ourselves with animals, we're not just going to make ourselves stronger. We could literally start altering behavior patterns in very, very complex ways. Humans could start developing a bloodlust for blood like some animals have. I mean, we, we could literally be talking about lycanthropes. Is that the most insane thing? Uh, but then add to that a new uh, field of science through uh, uh, perfecting organ transplantations mm -hmm. over the last decade. We've gotten better and better at keeping people alive. And you've probably heard of cellular memory transfer, where people who are having large organs donated mm -hmm. and recipients put in their bodies and they're staying alive are suddenly experiencing memories that are not native to them. Right. And complex behavior patterns. They suddenly want to smoke menthol cigarettes and they never did before. Uh, or, or, you know, they've always been very conservative and all, all of a sudden they're, they want to get involved with every immoral behavior on earth, right? Um, and what, there's almost 400 case studies now that are making a connection between the, the, the donor organ they received and the person who died and left those organs behind. Mm -hmm. They're actually connecting that some of these memories seem to belong to this person or the habit that this guy had. He likes to drink a certain kind of beer and smoke a certain kind of cigarette and all of a sudden this person that never knew him starts developing the same behavior patterns. And what this, what this is saying is that long-term memory storage may not work the way we've historically said that there's a certain part of the brain, for instance, where long-term memory storage is, is held. That's true. Uh, and uh, maybe it's being held in our DNA, mm -hmm. which would provide a, a longer-term template for that memory to be stored. Well, if that's true, Alex, what's going to happen when we start uh, going into the local genetics lab saying, you know, I really, I've always wanted to be part monkey, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, it's just, it, the, the superficial way that transhumanism is looking at this, mm -hmm. the utopian idea about the future, uh, doesn't even scratch the surface on the exotic, complex, uh, unethical, if I can use that term, issues that we're describing. And yet, as you said, uh, designer children are already being made. This week, a child was born in Britain that has three genetic parents. Really? Um, uh, this week, scientists uh, are now discussing how they think they can make um, a third helix. Why only have two helixes when we can have a third one? And the third one can take control of the first two. Those ones that God made aren't quite getting the job done. So we'll create one that man can, can take control of. Uh, it boggles the mind. There's, there's something else, too, that I want to see uh, a connection made here, at least to understand how we got from...